Hello and welcome to the show. We start this week's Ferris episode with Game Boy on Forza Horizon 5 and a car doing what a car shouldn't be doing in the upgrade shop. Uh, managing to drive through the wall and then fall through the sky until it hits something, some kind of invisible floor. I don't know where it's quite supposed to have landed. There's some random props around the place. Uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not how things are supposed to go, is it really, in, uh, in the upgrade shop, but, well... There you have it. Not the only vehicle having problems, though. A Rowan Arctic Fox on Horizon 5 completing a super jump as, uh, well, got a bit too fast for the game to really comprehend what's going on. Yes, the Lamborghini is frozen in the air. Now, that's one thing, you know, the game kind of being frozen. The thing that I love, though, is that is another player car driving around. So the game's very confused with how it's loading, but it's definitely gone wrong. It's definitely gone wrong with this Lamborghini. It might still be up there today. Who knows? Uh, USS Vagrant um, next on Horizon 5 is playing a round of the Eliminator. Uh, they are, you know, a decent way through to... Well, I think it's a decent way through. Only seven drivers left towards the end. Uh, looking for somebody to challenge. And sure enough, someone's spawned in behind them. I guess they finished a race. They go to challenge the Bronco. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that seems like a sensible enough matchup when the game decides to put the finish line directly in front of... Well, basically in front of the Bronco. It was pointing the right way. That is the shortest race I've ever seen. I mean, the buggy... You know, is always going to be in trouble there. Uh, the right foot on Exxon Horizon 5, also in the Eliminator, uh, has got one of these early game matchups. A Beetle is trying to hold off the McCann, and the Beetle resorts to some sneaky tactics. The thing is, Beetle's not exactly what you would call strong compared to a rally road vehicle. It first goes to block, which does kind of work, it then goes to ram, which doesn't really do too much, and then goes to ram again, misses, and then Karma bites it in the arse and it falls off the bridge. <laughs> I think that's one of my favourite Horizon 5 clips we've had, just for the beautiful, beautiful karma. Uh, Mike is up next on Automobilista 2. This is with an AI in turn 1 at Watkins Glen, going a little bit too much across the curb and having some problems. I mean, that will stop you cutting corners, that's for sure, uh, if when you hit the curb it does that. Well, it stopped the car initially, the vehicle behind it caused the front flip. Okay, uh, not, not ideal, but... Uh, Makes sense. The Indy car's very low to the ground and everything. Zombie Gent up next though on Dirt Rally 2 has a similar problem, only in a rallycross car in Turn 1 at Sweden. Uh, wide on the exit, hits the curb and everything goes bang. Pretty much. Now I've driven quite a lot around this circuit. I can, can't can say I've ever come across this is a problem. I mean, it, it is wide on the exit of Turn 1 here, uh, and I guess the game's got, the wheels are in the sort of sand trap and the centre of the car is across the top of the curb. He just digs in far enough, hits something. That's a big crash. <laughs> he just pings the Persia up into the air. And that uh, that will ruin that will ruin the race. Curbs are dangerous. I think I've said that before, but curbs are definitely dangerous. A Neapolitan RPG up next on the long drive has got an angry rabbit running towards them. The only thing to do then is to jump on the car for some safety. Seems like a reasonable idea. Thankfully the car, the car has got their back, managing to ping the rabbit into oblivion. Move on to SnowRunner next. And I'm not going to lie, just seeing this fills me with dread immediately. We know how glitchy the physics of SnowRunner can be. We know how freaked out the physics engine can get when, well, anything happens sometimes. Sometimes just bumping a signpost can be enough to launch vehicles around into space, let alone stacking three of them. Amazingly... Things going relatively well, and they continue to go relatively well until they head onto a frozen lake. Starts getting a little bit wrong. The truck, or well, the second truck, if you like, starts sliding off the back. Uh, I mean, I'm still, you're still half expecting the ping to space. There's sort, of, it's sort of not really going to balancing as as you'd quite want too much weight on the rear. Eventually, uh, the truck on the back just well can't can't stay there any longer and slides off. And you sat there thinking, well, of all the possible ways this could have gone wrong, that is the tamest possible. And it is. And then in attempting to restack the vehicles, we then have the tamest possible roll. <laughs> no physics pinging around to space, nope. Just sliding off and falling over. A Kelvin Toler up next on a set of Corsa. Uh, with, I mean, this is predictable. We've got a massive racing truck racing on very narrow roads. Just clips the bank on the inside, and off goes the truck into the scenery uh, from the replay camera. Yeah, it, it hit the bank initially. It was enough to just lose control. Hits the bank harder the second time, and gets pinged well out of the course. Uh, Bio Ren up next on Jurassic World Evolution 2, finding out that uh, fallen trees are sturdy. Far sturdier than the Jeep. Now, just pinging the Jeep around, sure, okay, fair enough. 
not quite sure what's going on here. Uh, we're going to spin around on the nose of the Jeep. This is not how any sort of physics work. It's still just determined to spin around on the nose. Eventually does come to a rest. If that helipad hadn't been there, I don't know what on earth weird physics uh, would have gone on with that. Uh, dropped him up next on Halo. is driving around in the Warthog that is uh, normally pretty good on all sorts of terrain. However, a bit too much airtime leads it into the tree line and it manages to get stuck. Normally these are pretty good at digging themselves out of trouble. I can't say I've got them stuck the Warhogs themselves haven't got stuck particularly often, but this one is well balanced. And of course, it's not technically rolled over, so you can't use the flip button. However, a couple of hits with the gun and it sorts itself out. Uh, Metalhead uh, is the final clip of the day on Project Cars 2, racing around a rather wet pretend Suzuka that we have going on here. Heading down towards turn one, and well, the AIs, they are not adjusted to the wet at Suzuka <laughs> all into the fence at the first corner uh, no one's getting stopped a few get round it better than others uh, a couple of cars have snuck through it relatively well but further back it's still complete carnage uh, everyone is sliding off the circuit into the gravel trap yeah, they were not prepared as even the cars at the back oh it was a nasty spin for somebody as well uh, with one vehicle trying to rejoin yeah uh, I don't know whether it like just started raining or how that was set, but uh, the AIs did not did not know how to contemplate that corner at all. But uh, there we go. That is going to be it for this episode. As ever, if you have clips you'd like to submit to this series, you can via a Google form. There'll be a link to it in the description. All the rules and how it works can be found on there. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a uh, goodbye.